if that's if that's your kill ratio, you're doing everything right. Um, this is just a war on a scope and scale that we in the West can't comprehend. There's a reason why the U.S. Army says we're going to lose 3,600 guys a day. That's because war, modern war, is hell. We have no clue what's about to hit us if we ever want to go in this. All these people in the chatter, America's great. We can roll over. No, 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 no. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, we can't. We're not bad, but we can't sustain it. We haven't prepared for sustaining it. A key aspect of sustainment is replacement troops. <laughs> what do we replace the brigade that's going to be burned out in two days with? Another brigade? We only have... 31 brigades in the U.S. Army. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And half of them are earmarked for the Pacific because we're goofing off with China and talking about a war there. So let's break it down. We got 15 brigades for Europe. <laughs> 15 brigades. You chew through one every two days. That's a month. We have enough active duty forces to last a month against it. But it won't be a month because we only have two weeks of ammunition. Uh, the, the, the losing to a brigade every two days is assuming that we have logistical sustainability, that we have sufficient ammunition quantities, et cetera. We don't have any of that. And now we're throwing a last thing. Many assumptions are made about how a unit will perform in combat. We have built an American military that has this information overload going on. We learned it in the war on terror. So our platoon commanders literally deploy to the front line with a laptop computer. And in the middle of a firefight, have that computer open. And they're sending reports back to their commanders who are sending it back to a group of people sitting in a bunker someplace looking at a command screen. And we're micromanaging everything. We have to have airplanes up doing communication relays. We have to have everything working perfectly. Let me tell you what happens when you go up against an enemy like Russia. Nothing works. It's not that nothing works perfectly. Nothing works. They will jam everything. So all this connectivity that we require, all this bandwidth we require to communicate will be shut down. So we will instantly lose all capability to perform any basic combat operations up to and including putting steel on target in the artillery. How do you get your targets? How do you program all this stuff? It ain't going to be happening. The American way of war requires satellite connectivity that isn't going to exist. So we will burn through our troops at a faster rate than 3,600 a day. We will be losing troops at a rate of about five to 6,000 a day. And now that 30 days is down to 15 days or even less. That's all the American military can do. And we're the best. And we're the best in NATO. There's not a NATO force out there that will survive more than a week against the Russians. This is the reality. So for all the people out there going, hey, we're killing Russians, best investment we ever had, you don't know what you're talking about. It's the worst investment because all we're doing is making Russia stronger every single day. The Russian military that exists today is orders of magnitude better than the Russian military that started this conflict in February, and that was a pretty damn good military. They have learned a lot of lessons that we haven't learned. They've incorporated new technologies. And they've Russia has perfected the art of mobilization. Man, when they started to mobilize back in September, October of last year, a lot of rust had to be kicked off the machinery. There was a lot of problems with that. Well, they have greased that up. They haven't just mobilized the 300,000. They've done two iterations of conscription successfully, absorbing a number of contract soldiers from that means their professionals have to go and organize 300,000 volunteers and additional contract soldiers for the other units. The Russians have trained over a million men in the last year. Over a million men have been trained and equipped by Russia. And these men are being trained to modern uh, combat tactics perfected against the Ukrainians, against a NATO-style Ukraine, Ukraine force. What is America doing? Hell, we can't even meet our you know, recruitment goal of 60,000. We're 11,000 short, which means we have to actually drop units from the roll. We can't sustain the military that we think we have. We don't have that military. We don't have enough troops for that military. And if we send them to war, we won't have any troops for that military. Lots of fast moving news today. So the army has just sent a ton of sergeants to recruiter school with only a one week notice that they were getting sent. They're doing this 
because they're down so low in numbers and they need new recruits. So they're putting a ton of new recruiters in stations coming around the holiday season. Now, not only did they promote all these people to become recruiters, they waived the body measurement standards and the fitness standards for these people. Plus, when they get out of school, they're going to be given the rank of staff sergeant, so they're getting fast-tracked. Now, they've also been told this is kind of the last-ditch effort to avoid a draft. So if we don't get a bunch of people volunteering for the Army very, very soon, the next step is going to be them taking your children from your house. Shit is getting crazy. Um, thank you, General George. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your family for being here. Thank you for your service. Um, so can we talk about recruiting? Um, let me just give you some numbers that you probably already know. I guess um, the Army law missed their numbers by 25% last year, and, and I think it's on track to do 23% uh, less this year. There's a Pentagon study that showed 77% of American youth are not eligible uh, to serve. And there's a recent Wall Street Journal article that highlighted a disturbing trend that said children of military families who typically make up 80% of Army recruits are telling their children not to serve, especially those in the South. So I'll just give you the, the things I'll ask, and you can answer me in any United order. United States, which has a massive military recruiting problem, is actively prepping for war in the Middle East. All evidence is pointing in that direction. So we're going to show you that evidence here in a moment. But here's a question. Would you be comfortable sending your son or daughter to die in the Middle East right now? So you have to ship them off to fight in Gaza, to fight in Israel, to fight in Iran, to fight in Saudi Arabia, to fight in Egypt. Would you be okay with sending your American son or daughter off to die in the Middle East? Well, let's reframe the question based on how it has been in the last 20 years uh, and the class and race of people who have been dying in the Middle East for America's endless war. Uh, so would you be willing to send poorer people for this war? Maybe not your kid, but maybe underclassed people that you don't have to see every day. Would you be okay with that? Because that's how we have been living. Right, unless we guess we have a draft. But, I mean, or, yeah, your, your son or daughter or poor people or lower class individuals who are not as well off, perhaps, as you are, would you be okay with that? Let's rewind. Well, we have been okay with that. That's how we have I, I been living. I think we have been okay with that. I think the government has been okay with that. Collectively, yeah. that's how we have been living. Okay, so, yeah, let us know in the comments below if you're okay with America's sons or daughters going off to fight in the Middle East. Let's rewind the clock, though, first on all of this. As soon as President Biden took office, he immediately reversed President Biden's, uh, but excuse me, President Trump's ban on transgender soldiers, immediately. Here was John Kirby announcing the re-rollout of the transgender plan. That's exactly right, Andrea. In 2016, the Obama administration opened up service to transgender people to not only be recruited, but to be trained and to be put in the field and into the fleet uh, and to be treated like everybody else in the military. Uh, the Trump administration reversed that policy. And today, President Biden is putting the 2016 approach back into effect. Okay. So then earlier this year, the Biden administration and the United States military then doubled down on their diversity recruitment efforts. Of course, you'll recall the recruiting. For, I mean, forget about recruiting for white people like that. That is so old school. We don't recruit for white people anymore. That's so World War Two. No, instead, if you're a transgender person or you're overweight, you're welcome to join the U.S. military. We'll accept you with open arms. And heck, if you're a transgender, overweight Asian person, then step right up. Because American taxpayers will even pay for your gender reassignment surgeries, as we reported here on the show. You don't have to be Asian. No, but I'm just I'm just trying to be as diverse as possible. Can you be overweight, Asian, transgender? And then, man, you're going to go right to the head of the class. So newly released documents, of course, show the United States military's policy on transgender members includes provisions to skip deployments altogether and receive indefinite waivers for grooming, physical fitness, and drug testing indefinitely. So the Biden policy says the military must provide what it calls medically necessary transgender hormones. Okay, medically necessary. And surgery. Medically necessary transgender surgery. If the person is in the process of transitioning, they will be considered non-deployable. Like that person can't go and fight. 
This means that a person can join the military, receive taxpayer-funded sex change procedures, such as... Welcome everyone here to Full Circle Florida. We all know the poster, the old guy with the white beard wearing the American hat and pointing right at you saying, I want you. Well, lately, the current generation has answered back with silence. The recruitment crisis now facing the U.S. military comes at a time of increasing conflict around the world. And as the FBI Director Christopher Wray pointed out this week to Congress, increasing terrorist threats here at home. So what is causing the disconnect with the next generation? This week I found why the answers are as diverse as the military itself. At a time when the world's hot spots are heating up on multiple fronts from Ukraine, Russia, and now the Middle East, most military branches are consistently falling short of recruiting goals. Are we as a country doing enough for them? Um, probably not. It's not for lack of trying. In recent years, the military has done everything from reviving the Army's 1980s slogan, Be All You Can Be, to loosening up tattoo policies and drug testing. The Navy even offered new record high financial incentives, in some cases up to $140,000. And yet, of the five branches, only two met their recruiting goals for 2023. The Marine Corps, barely, and the newly created Space Force, by far the smallest of the major branches. The Army, the Navy, and the Air Force all fell short. Is there something new in your estimation when you look at the landscape of, of the modern military that, that they're having? I'll start with what I reported before, but I have more details. 800 soldiers were grabbed out of other professions in the military and said, you will report to Kentucky for training on recruitment. But I've been told by many people that no military, they say, Dave, it's not recruitment. They're going to be draft administrators. That's what they're training for. The site they went to in Kentucky is about training for the draft. That's one indicator we have that gets very clear. And uh, we have seen numerous documents about this as well. Doug was talking about that to me this morning. That would be Doug Thornton, my broadcast partner in the Doug and Dave Intel report. Anyway, he's talking about a lady who sent out emails and he got a couple of these emails. And it's from the director of the organization in the military that handles casualties. And it's called CAC Actions. And uh, it's Chief Casualty Accounting. Uh, and her name is Michelle Schomber. And she's in charge. And she is soliciting training to increase the personnel for mortuary services. Let that sink in for a minute. For mortuary services, this is what she does. This is where a lot of the uh, our boys in caskets go to get prepped before they're sent to burial because they're so mangled from combat. 